The following video is brought to you by the Bishop of Technology website, helping ordinary people like you access and use extraordinary technology. These videos are meant as an overview of the associated guides located on the RayWaldo.com website. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the website. The actual website link associated with each video will be found on the description of the video below. The processes and use of any processes on these videos is entirely at your own risk. In no case will Ray Waldo, the Bishop of Technology website, or any of its agents be held responsible for any unexpected results you may experience from following these videos or the online guides on the website. Thank you. Let's get to the video. Hello everyone, Ray Waldo here, the Bishop of Technology. Today we're going to replace the glass and digitizer, LCD digitizer, on a Nexus 7. Uh, this is the 2012 version. And um, so if you have any questions or comments, be sure and check out our website at raywaldo.com. Also, there will be a better guide there than just this. So uh, what you're going to need, you're going to need some, uh, uh, these are called spudgers. They're just little tools to squeeze around, guitar picks and things, and uh, uh, a couple of screwdrivers, a Phillips screwdriver particularly. I don't think we're going to need the... Uh, straight edge, but uh, you'll also need a heat gun of some sort, or uh, you can leave your device out in the sun for about 30 minutes or so and heat it up. And you'll need uh, replacement glass and digitizer assembly. And this will cost you about $70 on Amazon, but the problem is you're going to have to order it, and even though some of the suppliers say they're local, uh, I ordered it from the same link, but mine came in from China takes about four weeks. So uh, just be prepared. It may take you a while to get it. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take the back cover off and uh, to do that you just open up the uh, the edge there and get you a little break in it and uh, once you've got it kind of broken loose there you just slide the tool around and then you know, once you get it easy, started it's easy. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult to get started at the very first. And uh, you can use one of these type tools and just slide it around and continue to break it off. Uh, not break it, but uh, separate it. And uh, go around from the, from the top to the left side and then to the bottom and it should pop off. Okay? And just set that aside. You don't need that anymore. Okay? And uh, the next thing we need to do is remove the battery connector because we don't want any power coming to it. So this is the battery connector going to the battery and uh, you just kind of ease it off from side to side. Okay, so you push it a little on that side and push it a little on this side. Uh, also there's a black uh, piece of tape here. We're going to pull that off and uh, you can go ahead and do that first if you can get to it. Sometimes it's uh, above the screw, the uh, battery connector and sometimes below it. Pull it all the way back and the metal connector will work with it, will be connected to it. Just kind of stick it to the bottom there. Okay, you remove the battery connector. Okay, and uh, there it is, it's coming off. Okay, so you got the battery connector off, pull it back out of the way. Then there are uh, the uh, LCD connector is right here. This uh, little device, uh, this little connector right here in the center is the LCD connector, and you just kind of lift it up, and uh, you'll find the connector will just pop right out. There it is, and you can see what kind of connector it is. Uh, looks a little bit like an IC. Okay, and uh, the next thing is these two little connectors down here for the uh, ribbon connectors, and they have little uh, uh, pinch devices on them. So what you're going to do is pull, can you see that right there? Uh, pull up on that white part there, and it'll pop me and see how it turned almost black there. Do the same thing on this one over here, and it pops up. Okay, we're going to do, well then we can pull the, that cable back, both sides of it, and uh, get it out of the way. Mine hasn't been out yet, and uh, it's a little bit difficult, it's a little tight. 
but that's okay. That's fine. And we'll just use another little tool and kind of help us edge it out. There it is. Okay. Pulls out. Okay. Once we get the uh, dual connectors off, then uh, we've got 15 screws around the outsides. And uh, I believe, I'm not mistaken, I think there may be one or two of these screws that are a little bit larger. If so, be sure and check and the size that they are and uh, keep the larger ones separate and know where they go. Okay, so I'll be back in a few moments after I get the screws done. Okay everyone, I'm back. I've removed the screws and note that there are two black screws. One right here in the lower corner and one right on the edge of the USB connector. And those black screws are longer than the others, so keep them separate. Be sure to watch out for them. There are uh, two screws on the end, the four corners, two screws on this end, that's a total of eight. And then there are three along this side over here, that's uh, eight and eleven. And then there are four along this side over here, so don't remove any more screws than you see. Mostly they're metal on this side. Over on this side you can tell they're all four are very uh, prominent. And then the four corners, and then two on the top, and two on the bottom here, these two right here. Okay. And once you get the screws out, then you're going to carefully remove the motherboard. Watch the connector here. Make sure that it doesn't get snagged somehow. Remove the motherboard and set it aside. Okay, we're through with the motherboard. Now what we have to do is to separate the bezel from uh, the glass because we didn't get the bezel. We only got a glass. Uh, see the difference here. And uh, so we're going to have to remove a part uh, this metal part around the outside. Okay, so uh, that's uh, not terribly difficult. What you have to do is heat it up real good. Uh, I used uh, an old hair dryer, and um, this is the first time I've tried this, so we're going to do it together, I guess. And uh, I used an old hair dryer and went around it for about 10 minutes, keeping it real, uh, real busy so it doesn't stop. And then when you feel a little bit, which it already is cool, so I'm going to have to. Since it's the glass that has the other side be sticky, we just heat the glass more than we do the bezel and then just separate the glass. Now, if you can't get that particular brand of heat gun, that's uh, probably not a problem. <laughs> I'm being facetious here. Okay, so we're going to try again. Well, we've got the pogo connector cleared. I think. Just so you understand, this whole section here is going to come unglued from the has to come unglued from the, the glass. So that's why it's such a problem there. You've got to get a big section off of the top and a pretty large section off the bottom.
this point I'm just trying to get it loose. If it breaks the glass, it breaks the glass. It's already broken it a good bit. I'll clean it up later. You do want to be careful, don't cut yourself on the glass too. And of course you know I cannot be held accountable for your actions. Or for mine for that matter. <laughs> okay. I think we're just about there now. Well, this is one of the most difficult ones I've ever done. I've done several phones, and the small phones come loose better than this. Of course, you can heat the entire phone easier than you can heat this larger screen size, so that may be the problem. All right, we're going to have to do some more heating, but this time should do it. to the touch now. Maybe that'll be enough. Let's see if we can get it loose. Okay. That's the major part of it right there. So we set that aside. And now we need to clean up the uh, bezel, get all the glass out of here, and uh, try to repair the, the adhesive or replace it. Okay, so um, we're going to stop for now and pick it up we'll again later. Okay, goodbye. Okay, I'm back, and the hard part is over. As you can see, I've cleaned the bezel very closely, uh, carefully, to get rid of all the uh, little shards of glass. Be very, very careful. Those are very, very easy to get in your skin, get on, uh, in, uh, cut you. Um, also, uh, but be careful that you don't leave any because when you put the new glass down, if there's a little shard of glass, it can uh, put a, 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 a twist in the new glass trying to lay down over it and it can break the new glass. So be very, very careful about cleaning it. Now what I've done, uh, I have taken the, uh, the bezel, and since I'm using the same uh, adhesive, they do have the uh, uh, little adhesive that you can buy, but it comes in a very narrow little, uh, probably about an eighth of an inch thick. So some of this is real wide, so rather than replace all of that, which I could, uh, but it would take a lot of little strips and then there's some little cutouts and things like that. So rather than do that, I'm going to reuse it. Now what I did, I took some spray adhesive, uh, just a spray can of adhesive. They sell it in uh, uh, Lowe's and Walmart and places like that. And sprayed this to give it a little bit more adhesion value. Stick that on. Let's see, it goes this way. Uh, and we pull the... Uh, 
ribbon cable underneath, stick it together, line it all up, and it's snapping in. Just kind of press it down a little bit. And if you hear anything that sounds unusual, be careful because you might have a shard of grass, glass under there. And if you did, then it may be uh, causing a warp in the, the new glass, which would crack it. Okay, and that feels pretty good. Okay, it's all in. It's around the edges. Fitted pretty well. There's a little edge there. There we go. Popped in. Okay. And I believe we're in place. Okay. Uh, this cable has to be moved from the old one to the new one because there isn't a cable there. Okay. So uh, we'll just lift that up. Let's see. Make sure what type of connector that is. Okay. It looks like that's the uh, kind of just wiggle out. going to slide up. Okay, and keep the polarity the same. In other words, keep it in the same frame and slide it into the new one. Make sure it goes all the way in. Not sure if that is a clamp. I believe it is. Yeah, that locked down. Okay. That locks in place. Okay, so to take this one off, we should have pulled this little snap up. Oh, yeah, and I didn't, okay. But it still worked, okay. All right, so we've got the cable on there now. Let's get this out of the way again. Some of these little shards of glass. All right, now, <laughs> I knew we had to have a, an LCD cable, and it's going to slide up inside the hole on the motherboard, see here, okay, and then we'll have something to connect to the motherboard. All right, so then we line up our holes, okay, and our pogo connector here, oh, looks good. Okay, so now we're going to just screw the screws back in, and uh, I'll take a break uh, while I do that so you don't have to wait on me to screw the screws in. Okay, I'm back, and uh, we have now uh, attached all the screws. Remember I said there are two black ones. They go right here on the black corner and right here on another piece of black plastic. And on this end there are one, two more. So that's a total of four down here. Over on this end there's one, two, three, four on that end, so that's a total of eight. And then there's one, two, three, four on this side, that's twelve. And on this side there are only three. One, two, three. That's the fifteen screws. Alright, once you've got the screws in, then you're going to hook up the uh, LCD connector. Well, you really, to do it in your exact reverse order you'd hook up the two ribbon connectors but I don't think it's going to make any difference. Um, okay and make sure that fits down there until you can feel it. Okay then bring these two over and slide them in together. They both fit together. And you might have to get a little something to put a little bend in it in the ribbon cable to get it to fit under there right. Complain and don't uh, criticize. All right, so we got that one started and this one started and push them all the way up. And when you get them up, and they are now all the way down in flat, pull these locks down, little white locks, pull them down, make sure they're, they're snapped in place. And that's what holds it. Okay. Okay, now be sure and remove the little. Uh, metal cover and put it back over onto the electronics like uh, this. 
I did not do that the first time and had to take it apart and remove it. Okay, uh, to move it back. Okay, so just be sure and do that before you move to the next step, putting the battery back. And that's done. Now we want to replace the battery connector. Okay, the battery's still charged up from before. And we'll hook up or replace the back cover. Uh, speakers in the bottom. And make sure that the power button and all are about right. Oh, we already turned the power on, evidently. Okay, so. Uh, That's a good sign. It looks like it's going to be working there. Okay, so we'll get all these snapped together. All right. Now, what this is, this is your recovery function. And if you ever get there, uh, we just go over here and use the arrow button up and choose whichever one we want. And we want to start and just press the start button. Okay. Now what we're looking for, there's still a piece of plastic here we've got to pull off, but uh, and we can do that now. It doesn't make any difference. When it comes up, we're going to make sure that the uh, touch sensitive, the touch sensors work. That's the main thing right now. We know we've got some video going, so that's a good sign. Uh, as long as the touch sensors work. Now remember when we started this, uh, the notification buttons were not, you couldn't get to the notification. You slide down, it wouldn't slide, so it wouldn't touch. So hopefully we'll have notifications when we get through here. that part works and the notifications work all right so uh, looks like we did a good job and we've got a new uh, device or basically a new device okay that's how you do it and uh, remember if you have any questions or comments be sure and contact me on raywaldo.com thanks bye